Hey folks, welcome back to our channel. My name is Nigel and this is Off Grid Van Life where we talk about off grid power, van conversions and everything in between. Basically anything related to vehicle based adventure travel. So today I'm going to be looking at some of the stuff we're doing on this van. So this is actually my dad's camper van and we've been doing a massive overhaul over the last few months just taking advantage of the lockdowns here in the UK to do some stuff on this. This van uh, my folks have had for like 15, probably going on 20 years now and it's been all over Europe, done loads of trips, loads of family memories are attached to this van. Uh, we actually installed satellite internet on this back in like 2006 before 3G was even around and all the like SIM plans and stuff that you can get and drove this van all the way to Bulgaria and back. Uh, going through most of uh, Western Europe and a lot of Eastern Europe as well. So got a lot of memories attached to it. So what I'm doing at the moment is um, busy replacing the old lead acid system for a DIY lithium ion phosphate battery. So there were four uh, lead acid 100 amp hour batteries in here before. And that's what my parents used to use to run things like the Nespresso, the microwave grill, all that sort of stuff. And then of course an inverter. My dad could work on the road in here charging his laptop, all that sort of stuff using the inverter. So it was a really good system for what they needed. So we're basically replacing uh, all of that with a DIY lithium ion phosphate battery system i think it's about a 280 amp hour uh, battery pack that we are putting in there and uh, which will give them more capacity than they had before with the four 100 amp hour uh, lead acids and then in terms of charging we're actually going for this guy we've not used this specific one before but this is a vertronics uh, or vertronic uh, battery charger triple it's a 60 40 430 so it's 430 watts of uh, solar 40 amp uh, B2B charger and a 60 amp uh, mains charger. So, so it's a pretty cool charger. You've got all of these dials here that you just adjust to be able to uh, set your voltage correctly and your thresholds, all that sort of stuff. There's quite a lot that you can do with this. I'll take you through it as I set it all in a bit. Uh, port for display. So one of the things I've been doing here is uh, just making a little mounting board there just out of some plywood that I'm gonna mount in the van. Uh, there's a gap where an old di um, display unit used to be. And so we're just taking advantage of that rather than mounting it somewhere else. We're just popping that one out because it's no longer in use and we're replacing it with this one. So I just put a little, made a little blanking plate just out of some thin plywood for that. So I'll take you through uh, setting that up shortly. But yeah, it's a pretty cool charger. So I use two uh, of these uh, brand chargers in my camper. So I've got a B2B charger made by these guys and then a mains charger as well. And I've been very happy with the performance of it. And so we thought we'd try this triple charger here. Obviously the drawback of a triple charger or, or an all-in-one system is that if it goes down, then potentially you have no charge at all. So you lose that redundancy. But then again, in terms of the <coughs> efficiency of setting it up, just having one charger to install, one display to look at and, and to uh, figure out what's going on uh, is very attractive. Uh, Vertronic is not as widely known as Victron, especially over in the US and, and Australia and other parts of the world. But here in the UK and in Europe, Vertronic is a very a well-known brand. It's a very reputable brand. It's a German company and uh, we've been using Vertronic equipment for many years. We had an older Vertronic charger in this van actually before we started pulling all the old lead acid system out and uh, yeah we really like Vertronic. I'd say I'd go as far as to say that they are as good if not better than the Victron stuff. The only drawback with Vertronic is that they don't have Bluetooth and apps available. Uh, so that's one advantage that Victron have. So if you really want to be able to see stuff on your phone, then uh, Victron is the way to go. But because we're putting in a Life PO4 battery, lithium ion phosphate battery that has a BMS that has an app, uh, we decided that this would be a really good bet to go. And Vertronic uh, don't, sorry, Victron don't make a triple charger as far as I'm aware, an all-in-one. So uh, yeah, we're gonna get this installed in here. This is where all this uh, electrical stuff is in this locker here. I'll show you what I've done so far. I've got all the wiring in place. Everything's good to go. Just need to plug this guy in. Uh, and then get the lithium ion phosphate battery in there. So, all right, so I've got all the settings set up on this guy. So basically set it for the lithium ion phosphate profile, 14.4 uh, volts as the max voltage. And then I've 
set the, a bunch of these other things here. So there's quite a lot of capability in this charger to integrate into your BMS to stop the charge uh, when you reach the correct voltage. And there's also facility to integrate into your vehicle immobilizer and all sorts of different things like that. Most of it I've just uh, turned off because we don't really use any of that. Uh, but the one thing that you can do with this is to trigger charge from your engine using the D plus signal, which comes from your alternator. So we laid a wire for that, uh, but yeah, otherwise it's looking pretty good. So I'm gonna get this guy installed. Uh, we've got the display unit, external display unit, which I will uh, mount as well. Uh, but yeah, looking good. Let's get it in and crack on. Okay, and here we go. So we've got 280 amp hour lithium ion phosphate battery installed there with a DALI BMS in the back there. We're using these Jintec uh, shunts at the moment, which have a little display, which I'll show you guys shortly. But yeah, pretty stoked with that. This is the wiring setup. So we have two kill switches there and there, uh, one for load and one for the charge. So we decided to separate them out uh, just to keep them on different lines. Uh, so obviously what they join in at that bus bar there and then go to a master fuse there, which then can cut off the battery. But yeah, so we've got load and then charge on that side. We've got a fuse for the load, goes to a bus bar there, which distributes uh, into the rest of the van. So these are going to various uh, drawers off in the van as well as that and then this big cable here is the inverter and then just common negative all the way around there cables go around there We've got two power lines there which you can see in the background and the main reason for that is because one of them is for the generator so there's a an lpg generator on this rig and there's also ehu electrical hookup so we have two there, so you can just swap between them if you need to. But yeah, this is the charger, so three in one charger. Various cables coming out of there for voltage checks and temperature checks, things like that. Network cable coming out of it for the uh, display unit. And then all of the cables coming in, so from the engine, from solar, and then going out to the battery. And then uh, just another negative bus bar there, everything wired in, cables coming in off the roof. And then we'll just take you guys around and show you the display that we put in as well. So if we go here, this is the unit we we're talking about for the Jintec, uh shunt. So yeah, it's pretty, we quite like it. It's wireless. So this is just powered uh, with a USB. So you can put it anywhere in the van uh, within a reasonable distance. I think the maximum distance is probably five meters or thereabouts, but it tells you what's being drawn from it, how many amps, etc. That's quite handy. So we just also wired in behind this thing here, all the way up there, the cable for the display unit. Do you want to put the torch on there? And put that in. So there was another unit that was in here and we just took that out and then put in a bit of plywood like that just to neaten it up and because the hole was bigger than we needed for this display unit uh, so that's what that looks like so the vitronic display unit you can change various things and see how we're doing so it's currently charging that battery at 40 amps which is the max for the electrical hookup part of the 
three-in-one charger. So yeah, pretty stoked with how it turned out. We'll be keen to see how it goes. What do you think? Waiting to do a good trip. Yeah, sounds good. So yeah, full conversion from lead acid to lithium ion phosphate. Keen to go. Oh, running at 14.1 volts at the moment. Yeah. 22 degrees, it's tropical. Yeah, good British summer. It's nice and warm here. So yeah, thanks everyone for watching. Hopefully this has been helpful in uh, figuring out some stuff around this Vertronics charger and uh, we'll keep you guys posted on how we get on with it. Cheers.